All right, good evening. Uh, good evening, viewers. Welcome to the uh, Passeries Sports Centre. As we are about to witness the uh, start of the uh, women's game, uh, between the SHF selection in red and the Tornadoes Hockey Club in white. Uh, Tornadoes Hockey Club has just been awarded their first penalty corner, uh, which has come to nothing when the ball is now turned over to the uh, team in red. Jonan on the ball right now for SHF selection. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, SHF is the Singapore Hockey Federation, and basically it's the uh, governing, uh, governing uh, federation for hockey in Singapore. And... Uh, over the years, we have developed many players, uh, both in uh, field hockey, as well as in, uh, in recent years in uh, indoor hockey. As you can see, it is slowly but surely gaining popularity here in Singapore, as uh, field hockey has been with us for a number of years. But um, some of the skills are very similar, for those of you who are not too familiar, in, uh, when you compare field hockey and the uh, indoor hockey, uh, with the exception of Certain rules, like for example, in indoor hockey, the teams are not allowed to lift the ball as they are traveling the ball from one end of the court to the other. Uh, so in most instances, if that happens, the umpire would blow for an infringement and award the foul to the uh, uh, infringed team. And right now, as you can see, a Tornadoes Hockey Club uh, being awarded a uh, free pass. And uh, in the field hockey, as much as it is in indoor hockey, uh, players are permitted to uh, do what we call a self-pass, where they don't actually have to pass to a teammate, but they can run the ball off from the point when the uh, foul was uh, committed. So at, at the moment, uh, we have still the uh, SHF selection uh, in possession of the ball, moving it quickly from left to right, but uh, turnover. And now we have Tornadoes. With their first shot, they go, ooh, just going past the post. Uh, the SHF selection goalkeeper doing a fantastic job to just knock it off the uh, uh, left post. So now the pass is a uh, free pass awarded to uh, Tornadoes. Self-pass there, and the ball uh, goes up the back line. Uh, the other point in uh, indoor hockey, we have the sideboards, uh, which actually helps the players uh, to keep the ball in play. And you can use it to basically deflect the ball off the sideboard to get it to your teammate uh, in a situation when uh, your receiving player is being blocked or marked by the opponent. The, the thing about uh, indoor hockey, it's a lot of hard work. We, uh, although it's in, it's in a small area, you find that it is a lot more strenuous than uh, field hockey uh, because being in a small confined space, having five outfield players um, working hard on, for each team to get the ball into the opponent's goal. Uh, you're constantly under pressure. There's no time for you to breathe. Sometimes no, no time for, for you to even look up to find a teammate. So we have SHF selection launching their first attack, getting into the Tornado's semicircle. The right now, uh, the uh, SHF selection has a... 11 players registered for this game. Uh, each team is allowed to register up to 12 players. But the uh, Tornadoes Hockey uh, Club team seem to have uh, six on field and one substitute uh, by the side. So it can be quite strenuous, especially for each half being 20 minutes long and not having enough substitutions uh, to relieve your, teams, your team players uh, on the court is going to make it very difficult. Uh, we are experiencing some uh, humidity here in Singapore and it can be a little bit tough trying to, to keep the game going uh, in this humidity in spite of the uh, game taking place indoors. The um, weather is very, very challenging right here in Singapore right now. But the game continues. We've got um, SHF selection uh, in possession and winning their first penalty corner against the Tornadoes Hockey Club in, in white. So let's see what the girls in red have for us uh, to try and get their first penalty corner. A 
And off we go. A weak push. The ball still comes out. Another chance for uh, Rahima. And uh, she's been, uh, a foul's been committed over on her. And then and second penalty corner is awarded to SHF selection. The only time that a team is allowed to lift the ball is when they are taking a shot at goal. In that particular instance, you would have seen the uh, uh, Rahima from the SHF selection lifting the ball towards goal. The goalkeepers are all fully padded, so that allows them to uh, be brave enough to stop the ball. Uh, incidentally, in indoor hockey, the uh, ball is slightly lighter than the ones that are used for, out, uh, for the outdoor field hockey. And uh, basically, the, the basic passing skill that is used in indoor hockey is just the push. And if the ball is a little lighter, uh, it makes it a little harder to push because you've got to use more strength. But in general, um, that's the only skill. And it's a generally, it's a, it's a very safe game because you can't lift the ball. Uh, however, the, uh, any risk of, uh, uh, that fault comes with the game, mainly in, in the event of uh, perhaps maybe a slight clash between two players as they are rushing forward for the ball. Uh, in certain instances where the ball gets lifted off accidentally, as you've just seen uh, at that point, where the ball gets lifted off uh, slightly off a, a defense stick. Well, the game is uh, going on actively for both the SHF selection team in red as well as the Tornadoes Hockey Club in white. And right now, uh, the uh, girls are fighting it out, trying to get their first goal for their own teams. Very, very close skills. As you can see, as the players are moving with the ball, they have to keep the stick on the ball close enough to turn the direction when they are under pressure by the opponents. Ball being passed around, Ami around the ball. Chance for Tornadoes. Well saved by the keeper once again. Slightly lifted ball there by Amira and the umpire has awarded a penalty corner to Tornadoes Hockey Club for that ball being lifted off the ground. As you can see, the defending team has to line up on the opposite side of where the uh, pass is being taken. So you can see all five girls in red on the right of the keeper. Goalie runs out to close down the shot. And another penalty corner awarded because the goalkeeper sort of obstructed the opponents from uh, being able to reach the ball in that particular instance. And then you see another penalty corner for Tornadoes. Quick switch of the ball. Miss push there by uh, one of the defenders from the SHF selection. Good pressure. Uh, good work there by Amira to try and keep the ball in possession. Amira, quick pass to the right. Close skills there, but the umpires awarded a penalty corner against the Tornadoes Hockey Club uh, because of the uh, stick tackles that were going in on Seng Yu Xuan, the number 13 from the SHF, SHF selection. Ball coming out. Goalie closing the, the penalty corner down. Jesse finding Amira. Amira back to Jesse. Jesse looking for options. Can't find one forward. Sends it back to Amira. Quick push down into the foot of the uh, Tornadoes number nine. 
Caitlin Morgan. Ball coming out for SHF selection. Good close control there by uh, Jody Koh, the number 15 from the SHF selection team. And a full substitution of uh, players from the SHF selection. Rahima on the ball to Joan N. Good pass there to uh, the number six. A uh, slight clash there by both the players from uh, their respective teams. Joan N on the ball, looking for an option. Good pressure there by the uh, Tornadoes team to get the ball back. Quickly taken there by Tornadoes. Juan Alina on the ball, trying to look for options. Finds Rahima on her left. Quick ball there, right across. Good attempt there by uh, Jen Jenna Lim to keep the ball in possession, uh, keep the ball in play. Just couldn't get to it quick enough. Jonan. Chance for Tornadoes, well saved there by Rahima, rebounded off the sideboard, but again, Tornadoes coming to them. Good work there by, by the SHF selection. Nasuha on the ball. Not sure what she's going to do with it, trying to get away. Joan N. Jana under pressure. Joan N. Fighting for the ball, doing well to keep possession for the SHF selection team. Nasuha. Not quick enough to get the ball away. Jana was free for a pass. She's struggling to try and keep the ball under control. Rahima on the ball. Rahima was, uh, did well to get to earn that free pass. Uh, by pushing the ball into the foot of the uh, Tornadoes player. Nasuha. Rahima. Joan N. Finds Jenna. Loses control. Caitlin for Tornadoes. Well, the game is uh, fairly even now. Both teams are having a fairly equal chance to uh, try and uh, get their first goal. The score is still nil-nil for both these teams. Joan N on the ball. Under pressure, keeping the ball close to the stick. Good work there. Oh, the ball hits the post. And it's a goal on the rebound. Wanalina losing possession at that point in time and uh, allowing the uh, ball to be uh, pushed forward. And in that situation, we had uh, Susanna Morales stepping in to take that first shot, ball bouncing off the post and going in for the rebound. But the umpire, the uh, coach for the SHF selection, who is also currently the um, coach for the uh, national indoor hockey teams, Ridzwan Pon, and he is uh, called for a timeout so that he can speak to his players about the uh, tactical movements where they can uh, perhaps find a way to uh, get back the equalizer against this very strong um, uh, players from the Tornadoes Hockey Club. The score stands at 1-0 now for the uh, SHF, uh, against the uh, ex SHF selection team, the Tornadoes team, uh, scoring their first goal. And um, each team, uh, this, uh, some information about indoor hockey, each team is allowed to call for a timeout. Uh, in, in one half, each team is only allowed one call for a timeout. And right now, uh, 
the SHF selection has just called for their timeout, where uh, coach Redzwan Pon has uh, given some idea of how they can improve their game. And we just have the SHF selection starting out the uh, playoff for the start of the game. Down by 1 0. Rahima on the ball, Joan N. Joan, still Joan N. Trying to find a way out from that corner, being closed down by two of Tornado's players. Quick, quick pass taken there. Good work by the uh, SHF selection team. The other point that I'd like to uh, point out in this uh, in the in indoor hockey, which is very similar to the field hockey, is that the teams are allowed to do what we call a rolling substitution, where they can just uh, call a player out and replace the player with someone else uh, without having to stop time. They can do that with uh, one player or they can do it with the entire team, uh, which is what the uh, SHF selection team did earlier, where all five outfield players came out and were replaced by the other five coming in. Jenna on the... Uh, SHF selection doing well to uh, keep possession. Joan N. Rahima. Juan Lalina. Good control there. Close down very quickly. Jenna on the ball. Back to Rahima. And nobody there. Oh, wow. Well, the game is really, really fast and makes it very difficult to, uh, to make a decision as to where you want to go, what you want to do, who you want to pass to. So in this particular instance, you can see that uh, the players have to be very, very quick in their decisions. Juan Alina looking for Jana. Rahima, one of uh, the experienced players in the team. She, uh, she was uh, formerly in our national indoor, uh, formerly in our national field hockey team, um, and then playing a short stints in France in one of the local clubs over there. Ball turned over to the uh, SHF selection, Joan N. Double team there. Uh, incidentally, Joan N and Jenna are both sisters, both of them at that point in time closing in on the uh, number 13 for uh, Tornadoes Hockey Club. Tornado still in possession. Ball rolling off the back line. And it's a corner for Tornadoes. And oh boy, I think the umpire should have blown for an advantage because Jenna was on her way to try and challenge the Tornadoes defense. Well, the call was made. Anyway, now we have Joan N. Jana finding space in the corner. Oh dear. Rahima at the back. Good stop, bird. Well done. Good turn there by the uh, Tornadoes, number 19. Keeper being alert to try and stop the ball. Still under pressure, SHF selection. Good pressure there by Karao N, the number 19 from Tornadoes, trying to get shots at goal. Rahima. Chance there for uh, SHF selection. Nasuha with some space on the left. Rahima losing the ball. Both fighting over there in the corner. Umpire's blown for a bully off as both players were fighting for the ball. Just one knock of the ground, one knock on the stick of the opponent, and then both challenge for the ball. That's how we start in hockey in a situation where the umpire has awarded both 
both teams eh, the foul. Nasuha. <coughs> Rahima doing well to pressure. Yeah, I think the ball came off the uh, Tornado's uh, defense, but umpires awarded a free pass for Tornado's. Well, right now, the Tornadoes are up by 1-0. All right, goal scored there by uh, the number 13. Ball coming in. Good. I think the umpire should have given an advantage. Juanolina was already on her way towards the goal. Once again, uh, the umpire was too quick to blow the whistle. But nonetheless, ball awarded to... SHF selection. Ball lifted off the ground there by the number 15, Jody Cole. <coughs> Juanalina, Nasuha can't get down quick enough. Amira. Good pass there by Amira uh, across, however, a little bit too far off for her teammate, Noor Ashikin. <coughs> and the ball goes out for a corner. And that is the halftime whistle, and both teams will be out uh, to um, reassess their strategy and their tactics to try and see how they can uh, improve on their game. So as we uh, leave the, the game at halftime, the Tornadoes Hockey Club are leading by one goal to nil. So I'm just going to take a short break and I'll be back in a short while uh, to comment on the second half of this game between the Tornadoes Hockey Club and the SH SHF selection, the Singapore Hockey Federation selection, right here in Singapore at the Pasir Ris Sports Centre. Thank 
amazing. Well, welcome viewers to the uh, second half of the game between the Singapore Hockey Federation selection, uh, the ladies in red against the Tornadoes Hockey Club in white. And uh, right now the uh, Tornadoes Hockey Club are leading by one goal to nil uh, in this very exciting game uh, that's, uh, that uh, we are witness witnessing here at the Passeries Sports Centre. Juan Alina on the ball trying to look for support from Rahima. Rahima protecting the ball Rahima doing well to uh, keep the ball under posi uh, in possession We've got Natasha there trying to look for Jenna up front but uh, the uh, rebound off the sideboard uh, is a little bit too broad and the ball uh, didn't get to uh, Jenna Tornadoes Very quickly taken there by Tornadoes. Chance for them to score their second goal. Both teams fighting it out. Goalkeeper closing down the space. Rahima doing well to keep possession. Quick pass to Jonan. Jonan trying to look for Wanalina. One, one Finds her. Good defense there by Tornadoes. Keeping possession. Stick check on the Tornadoes hockey player. Carol Kane, Carol Ann, I beg your pardon, uh, who uh, scored the uh, first goal for Tornadoes. Ball coming off the foot of uh, the uh, SHF player, Natasha. Nice hard pass to the forwards. Tornadoes with another chance to score. Goalie on the ground. Tornadoes trying to force the ball past the keeper. Rahima on the ball now. Ball coming off the foot of the uh, Tornadoes. Jessica Hinton, the number 48. Joan Ann, quick pass back to Rahima. Trying to do a quick reverse pass off the sideboard with the ball jinked over the uh, sideboard. Ball turned over to uh, Tornadoes. Tornadoes now putting the pressure. And there was a stick check there by Jana on the um, number 19. Carl on the ball. Tried to do a pass and it lifted it across, and that is a foul. So one of the things about the in the hockey is that you know the, uh, the element of danger is greatly minimized because players are not allowed to raise the ball except when they are taking a shot. Uh, there are many instances where the uh, game. Uh, 
still a little bit new to many of these players and some of them not really sure of the rules and uh, you would see from time to time uh, players uh, checking with the umpires uh, the officials off the court uh, to verify some of the rules um, just to make sure they don't, they don't that they get the right ones and uh, it does uh, have a certain amount of uh, pressure for players uh, to keep their body and their, and their, f and their knees bent uh, because they need to keep the stick on the ball at all times. So the legs are really under a lot of pressure to uh, try and keep uh, the ball in possession. And at, right now, uh, the umpire has just blown for a penalty corner for Tornado's Hockey Club for an infringement on one of their forwards. And we have the SHF selection girls getting ready for the penalty corner. You can hear Coach Redzwan shouting out instructions to his girls. Ball coming out. Goalkeeper doing well to put pressure. And ball taken out quickly. Joan N doing well. Getting to Rahima. Rahima finding Natasha, Natasha looking for, for help there. Jana trying to get through Rahima on the ball. Nice and strong there by uh, the Tornadoes player. Rahima doing well to slow down the game. The umpire is uh, committed a... Well, the umpire has seen an infringement and not quite sure uh, what he saw. Uh, obviously, there are some rules here that are synonymous to this game, uh, which it makes it quite different from field hockey. There's Amira on the ball. The umpire telling her to take the pass from the correct spot. The players trying to look for options. Jenna, I beg your pardon, uh, Jesse on the ball. Quick turn there. The thing about the indoor hockey is that because many of these, as I mentioned earlier, many of these players are not very familiar with the rules. Some of them are not even sure what foul they committed. And they just have to look to the umpire to see what decision is being made. So, yeah, and uh, of course, having uh, played field hockey for so many years, many of these girls would be um, thinking that some of the rules in field hockey would apply in indoor hockey, but as, uh, as the rules are a little bit more different, uh, certain rules that apply in uh, field hockey definitely doesn't apply in indoor hockey. So it all depends on the umpires and the rules and how they implement and uh, interpret the rules to help these players understand what, is the, what are the differences uh, between field hockey and indoor hockey and right now back in the game we have Amira trying to look for Jesse in the middle uh, the ball just going astray ball turned over to Tornado's Hockey Club uh, who are leading by one goal to nil right now it's not an easy task to actually score in this game and in general uh, a lot of the time play continues and uh, the coaches must uh, be able to come up with various strategies to get the ball out. Sort of like a playbook because sometimes players don't have much time to think um, in a fast-moving game like this one. It's a little bit humid out there and I think the girls are slowly beginning to feel it. Uh, they're slowing down a little bit more. So the substitutions or having enough players to substitute is very important. Taken quickly there. Good work there by uh, SHF selection. Got taken from the right spot there.
Susanna on the ball. Chance. Chance for SHF. Selection the ball coming off the foot of the uh, Tornado's defender. Well, now they have another chance to uh, equalize. We have Wanalina on the ball now. Rahima on top of the D with Jodi. Getting ready to trap for her. Good, quick uh, movement there. Jody trying to put pressure. Jody on the ball, quick pass. Ooh, Wanalina not being able to control the ball. Ball going off the sideboard. Ball awarded to uh, Tornadoes. John N, I think, uh, accused of uh, lifting the ball at that point. Jenna doing well to win the ball back. Putting some pressure. Ooh. Miss pass there, right? Amira with a stick check. On the uh, number nine. Amira with a stick check on Caitlin. The uh, Tornadoes number nine um, umpire awarding a penalty corner to Tornadoes. Another chance now for Tornadoes to uh, get their, uh, another goal. All right. They are right now, they're leading by one goal to nil. So all the uh, SHF selection girls are getting ready to run off. Goalie coming off a line. Well turned away. Caitlin trying. Caitlin trying to get the shot in. Well stopped there by Juan Alina, the uh, number six for, for the SHF selection. Jonan on the ball now. Rahima on her left. Ooh, Jonan there losing possession. Good tackle there by the uh, Tornadoes forward, Caitlin. Caitlin under immense pressure there with three reds uh, around her. Joan N. Jody can't get round. Joan N doing well to win the ball back. Ooh. Wanalina doing well, got, getting past a man. Chance for Reds. Rahima stepping forward, trying to get that shot in. Under pressure there. Wanalina doing well to get the ball back. Ooh, miscommunication there between Rahima and Wanalina. Ball going out for Tornadoes Hockey Club. We have Tornadoes now leading by one goal to nil. We are so probably somewhere midway through the uh, second half of the game. Tornadoes with a chance. Ball right across. Caitlin. Tornadoes doing well to keep the ball in possession. Well done there. Oh, good effort there by 
the uh, Tornadoes to try and get another goal. We have uh, Karao N putting pressure on the uh, SHF selection defense, winning a penalty corner in the process. Ball coming out, Caitlin. Good work there. Tornado still having a chance. Well saved on the line. And a penalty stroke. Penalty stroke has been awarded. So time will stop for now as the penalty stroke is uh, being taken. And I believe the reason for that is because as the ball was approaching the goal line, the ball came off Joan Ann's foot. And uh, as the ball is... Uh, in a situation like that, a goal-scoring opportunity, penalty corner is awarded. Uh, once again, I, feel, I felt that at that point in time, the umpire should have held off his uh, decision a little bit longer, uh, held off his decision whereby he could have allowed the play to continue to see whether the ball actually crossed the line because the Tornadoes girls actually put pressure on Jonan to get the ball across the line. And if that were the case, and before the umpire blew the whistle, the uh, goal, sh goal would have been awarded. So lucky for SHF selection and unfortunate for Tornadoes because they didn't score in the penalty uh, stroke that was awarded to them. Anyway, now we have SHF selection on the ball. Nasuha there, winning possession. Joan N on the ball. Rahima getting the ball across to Jesse. I beg your pardon, that is uh, Jana. Natasha coming in for Jenna. Ball to Joan N. Quick free pass taken there by Tornadoes. Good work by Rahima. I beg your pardon by Amira. Amira is a very strong. Uh, uh, she's very strong on the ball. And she is uh, able to... Uh, penetrate the, uh, the, the uh, team uh, by keeping possession of the ball. Joan N. Amira. Good, nice, strong pass there by Amira, but uh, Nasuha not being able to get to it. Joan N on the ball for SHF selection. Ball being called back uh, for the free pass to be taken again by a, uh, the Tornadoes Hockey Club because the initial pass was not taken from the right spot. Tornadoes, free pass, 1-0. Not much time left for SHF selection to get back, get the equalizer. Uh, they had a couple of missed opportunities, but the uh, Tornadoes Hockey Club had more opportunities to score and they should have uh, been able to score a second goal. Now there's some confusion here. Anyway, Tornadoes on the ball, Caitlin, Amira, doing well to win the ball back. Natasha winning an infringement. The Tornadoes, uh, some of the players are not very sure about the rules. I think uh, the umpires' uh, chance for Tornadoes. Well saved by the uh, goalkeeper. It's a long corner for Tornadoes. Karoen doing well and the umpires awarded a penalty corner against the SHF selection. Well, one of the things that uh, 
One of the areas that the SHF uh, selection team has to uh, work on, I guess, is their finishing because they did have opportunities to try and score but uh, did not capitalize much in those situations. Anyway, Tornadoes, Caitlin on the ball, getting round the goalkeeper. Joan Ann under pressure. Committing another foul and uh, awarding another penalty corner to Tornadoes. Quick ball to the top of the semicircle. Goalkeeper out. Wanalina Nasuha. Counter attack by SHF. Tornado's doing well to get back. Caitlin, some skill. Foul against her. Right, and the ball is. Uh, there are a lot of little uh, dark corners here in this court, and I think the ball has moved, uh, has, tr has uh, trickled into a uh, under the stands somewhere. And umpire can't find the ball, so they're calling out for another one from the officials' bench. It's another ball coming into play. This is the second ball to be called in. As I mentioned to you, the uh, hockey ball in indoor hockey is a little bit lighter. So when you use the strength to try and force the ball, you really got to use a bit more strength to get the ball moving. Jody trying to find a way through. Juan Alina on the ball, finds Rahima. Rahima to Joan. Joan finds Jenna. Good work there, Juan Alina. Chance and a penalty corner. Well, so far uh, through the game, this has been the uh, closest to a quick series of passes that the uh, Tornadoes Hockey, I beg your pardon, the uh, SHF team has uh, been able to uh, create. And that's good because uh, if they need to continue to build on this and do more of that sort of thing in order to, to try and get their, uh, themselves back into the game. Anyway, it's a long corner, long corner for uh, SHF. Not much time left for them, so the girls really have to work hard. Tornadoes defending hard. Ball lifted slightly. You see, the thing is, uh, with indoor hockey, even if you're making a pass and it lifts off the ground, that in itself is also an infringement. So that's the, uh, the good part about the game. A little bit frustrating, actually, because uh, it's, you really have to get the correct technique to keep the ball on the ground. That's the call. That is the call of the uh, final whistle. But the penalty corner continues because the game, they have to clear the ball out in order for the game to be considered over. And that ball has hit the foot of another Tornadoes player. Although time is, is finished, they will continue with this um, penalty corner. This is probably one of the last chances, in fact, the last chance for Tornadoes uh, SHF selection to get their equalizer. Can they get it? Miss push, quickly clearing the ball away. The ball coming off Jana's foot. And that is the end of the game. Well, I must say, the uh, Tornadoes Hockey Club uh, had their chances, did well to get one goal from them. The SHF selection also had numerous chances, but just couldn't get that ball into the net. But in, 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 in any case, uh, it was an exciting game. Uh, we will be uh, taking some time off as we prepare for the commentary for the next game that's coming up in a few minutes. But in the meantime, kudos to both these teams, the Tornadoes Hockey Club, as well as the SHF selection team for putting up a good show, a good display of skill, fitness, speed and everything that comes in the game of indoor hockey and uh, to entertain all of us while, the, while uh, they are trying to battle it out to win the game. So I'm going to take a short break and I'll be back in a few minutes for the next game in the 
Singapore Hockey Federation Indoor Hockey Competition 2019 right here at the Pasiri Sports Centre in Singapore.
Uh, good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to the uh, Pass Series Sports Center here in the uh, Singapore. And uh, we are witnessing the game between the Singapore Cricket Club in white against the Eagles Hockey Club in black in the SHF indoor hockey competition. Right now, uh, the game has just started. We've got a, uh, both teams battling, out, battling it out. And right now, the uh, game is still at nil-nil. Eagles on the ball. There we have a little infringement taking place. And we have Eagles Hockey Club, Elfian, uh, Elfian uh, being brought down intentionally, getting a bit upset uh, at the point in time for uh, that infringement. And a foul is uh, awarded to uh, Eagles. Alfian, the uh, number, number 77 on the ball. Eagles getting the ball out. Quick passes there by the SEC, getting the ball into the semicircle and being awarded their first penalty corner of the game. See what comes out of this. Good work there by the uh, goalkeeper to keep the ball out. Gerald on the ball for SEC, trying to get it across. Alfian winning it back. Foul committed. Ball uh, in favor of the Singapore Cricket Club. Cricket Club doing well to uh, keep the ball moving. Good possession there. Eagles in possession of the ball. Trying to move the ball out. Nicholas, a uh, quick pass across to Gerald. Gerald to Nicholas. Good defending there by the Eagles Hockey Club. Rifki. Penalty corner awarded against the uh, Eagles Hockey Club for an infringement. I think uh, Arasu, the uh, number five from uh, Eagles, uh, making an error. The thing about uh, indoor hockey is that even as you pass and the ball is lifted off the ground, that in itself uh, would be an infringement. So penalty corner number two for the uh, Singapore Cricket Club, very early in the game. Eagles on the defense. Gerald, quick pass. Arasu doing well to get out quickly to try and uh, win possession of the ball, doing well in that, in that particular situation.
still SH, uh, still SEC, and SEC is scoring their first goal of the game. Good pressure there by the uh, SEC forwards. I think the goal was scored by Julian Benjamin, if I'm not wrong. Alfian on the ball. Poor pass there by Rosu. Chance for Eagles now to counter. Arasu overlapping. Both players fighting it out there. Ball lost the possession. Still SEC though. Some help coming in. Jordan on the ball now trying to get out of the corner. Moving the ball. The SEC is appealing. The both umpires they are consulting. So right now we have a situation. The SEC Okay, umpires reverse his decision after consulting uh, the other umpire who is a, I believe, a visiting umpire to help us with uh, interpreting the rules of the uh, indoor hockey competition. And a bully off has been uh, awarded once, three times as the other umpire is uh, signaling. And here we go. Ball quickly transferred across to the right side. Fast moving. Foul taken again. The umpire feels that it wasn't taken at the right spot. So SEC, uh, bigger pardon, the uh, Eagles Hockey Club has to take their free hit again. Arasu. Under pressure by two uh, SEC players. Gabuli off awarded for both players. Quickly taken there. Reef key on the ball. Transfer to Alfian. Alfian finding space for his number 10. Hari with an opportunity there to try and get the first goal for uh, SEC. Free pass awarded to SEC. Nicholas on the ball. Well done by Rifki to get in front. Ball coming out. Hurry on the ball. Rifki. <coughs> Bully off by both teams. Ball coming off Rifki's foot. Leonard trying to look for his 49. Jordan, ball awarded. Jordan on the ball now. Hurry, trying to get out of the situation. Under pressure by three SEC players. Alfian, through ball there, but not being read well by the uh, forwards. Ball coming out for SEC.
Guhan uh, trying to get the ball out of the uh, player to 121. Viet Frederick Kepler for SEC uh, SEC in possession now. Quickly taken there. Leonard on the ball. Finds Gerald. Gerald trying to look for an option. Close down there by Pawn. Good work. He died on the ball now. Good pressure there by the uh, number 19, Muhammad Faris, for SEC. But then uh, losing possession, pawn on the ball now. He died on the ball, trying to look for a chance to score. Does a reverse uh, push, but. Uh, not quick enough, not hard enough to uh, get the ball past the uh, SEC goalkeeper. Asaf Heng, I think that's what his name is. Well saved there by the uh, Eagles goalkeeper. Upon losing possession. Faris on the ball. Leonard. Gerald, he died on the ball now. He died with some space on the right. Finds pawn, but the ball comes off the foot of one of the SEC players. Rifki, trying to look for Matthias. A little bit too hard, a little bit too far. Good work there. Rifki on the ball, uh, beg your pardon, Faris on the ball. Closed down by the uh, Eagles players. Rifki doing well to get the ball back for Eagles. Finds Pawn. Pawn with some space on the right. Tony on the ball. Hidayat. Quick ball to Matthias. The ball needs to travel uh, one meter first before a pass is made. I believe uh, Hidayat did not uh, allow the ball to travel that distance. The umpire is blown for an infringement. Uh, although Matthias had a good tie, a good chance to score. Good shot by him, though. Elbow there by the SEC number one, two, three. Unfortunate there for uh, Afik. Couldn't keep the ball in in the field of play. Nicholas on the ball. Finds Faris. Faris trying to get the ball to his uh, teammate, uh, Viet. Frederick. Frederick to Faris. Good pass there by Faris, but ball coming off. Empire awarding a penalty corner against Eagles Hockey Club for an infringement. I think it's because the ball came off the foot of one of the players. Uh, it's likely to be Arasu, the uh, number five for uh, Eagles. Ball coming out. Ooh, good shot. The ball coming off one of the uh, players, the defense, and then ricocheted off the player, hit the goalpost, and came off uh, the left post of the um, Eagles goalkeeper. And another penalty corner awarded. Ball coming out one more time. Poor stop there. Well done by Tony to kind of get the ball back. Uh, 
infringement against SEC. Good work there by Pond to try and win the free pass. And the ball is being lunged forward. Good pressure there on the SEC team. Good work there, Faris on the ball. Ooh, unfortunate for Pawn, he lost possession there. Faris. Well stopped there by Pawn. Quick passes there. Chance for Eagles. Can they score? And it's a penalty corner. The Eagles team's not happy with the decision. They're claiming that the ball was lifted by the goalkeeper, which is true, but at the same time, I think the ball was lifted and the uh, foul should be awarded to the Eagles Hockey Club, which in this case, a penalty corner was given. He died on the ball. Quick ball out for Pawn. Good work there by the uh, SEC goalkeeper, S. of Heng, for stopping that pass. Arasu, Pawn, Hidayat. Good quick passes there by three. Ball slightly lifted there by uh, Pawn. Foul committed. Now the Eagles boys are now settling in a little bit better, which is good. Uh, SEC, another chance to score. Foul committed for raising the ball. Jordan, the number 49 for SEC. Good work there by Hidayat. Pawn on the ball. Arasu trying to find a way out. Finds Hidayat. Hidayat being obstructed there. Strong, hard fight there on the ball. Both teams eager to get the game going. Whistle blown. Hidayat still on the ball. Good work there. Hari finds spawn. Hidayat trying to find a way in. Does well to get the ball back. Hidayat blowing for a whistle. Well, the Eagles team has to stop appealing for any infringement because the game is still going on. If they continue to uh, appeal, they will be distracted from actually playing the game, thereby allowing the opponents who are in possession of the ball to advance with one player more because the other team is busy trying to appeal to the umpire for an, an infringement or a foul that wasn't given to them. 
the thing about the cricket club boys uh, that they just keep playing the game. They don't appeal and they don't, uh, you know, um, they, they try to keep the game going as far as possible, which is a good thing. And in any case, now they're leading by one goal to nil. So they have the advantage and Eagles should not try to The umpire there, appeal being made. Okay, time. This is half time now. And there we got Elfian, the player that, that was uh, initially committed a foul, throws his stick and it ricochets off the ground into the crowd. He's been given a yellow card. It was totally unnecessary for him to do something like that because the foul for half, the, the whistle for half time has already been blown. Napaya is given a yellow card, which means that the Eagles Hockey Club will start the next half with one player less. Well, we leave the half time with, uh, we leave this game at half time with a 1 0 score for the Singapore Cricket Club. And uh, we'll be back in a short while uh, to run the commentary for the uh, second half. So don't go away. Don't uh, wander too far away because uh, they only have about five minutes before we resume this game between the Singapore Cricket Club and the Eagles Hockey Club.
So welcome back to the uh, second half of the game between the Singapore Cricket Club and Eagles Hockey Club right here at the Passeries Sports and Recreation Center in Singapore in this uh, indoor hockey competition. And right now we see SEC in white. They are in the lead with uh, one goal uh, scored in the first half and they have just launched their first attack. The Eagles Hockey Club are starting with only five players because just at half time uh, after the umpire blew the uh, halftime whistle, we have one of their players uh, who were in a fit of anger actually threw his stick off the ground when it ricocheted off the ground, rather it bounced off the ground and landed in the stands. And of course the umpire awarded a yellow card to that player for dissent, which meant that the uh, Eagles team will have to start with five players instead of the usual six. This gives uh, the SEC a chance to get another goal if they continue the pressure because uh, they are already leading by one goal to nil. Arasu on the ball, Hidayat trying to find a way out, can't get out. Hidayat doing well to get past his men. Umpire appealing, I beg your pardon, play, uh, Eagles appealing for a uh, foot, not given. SEC continues play. Frederick under pressure there. Eagles doing well to uh, get the ball out. So one of the things about this game is the the uh, intention of keeping it as safe as possible is uh, imminent because of uh, the speed of the game and because of the confined space that both these teams are playing in. You've got 12 players playing in a space a little bit bigger than four badminton courts uh, in, in the case of the measurements that you see on the court right now. But at the same time, because uh, the players are all very low and close to the ground, uh, there's always the risk of a follow-through of the ball or a stick coming into contact with the opponent. So every time the ball is lifted, intentionally, intentionally or otherwise, uh, a foul will be called. In the exception of a shot that's being taken towards goal in the semicircle, uh, in situations like that, the ball, only then will the ball be allowed to be lifted. And we're Rifki on the ball now, tries to find uh, his forward, uh, Guhan, number 11, who uh, can actually control the ball at that point in time. SEC, Gerald. Eagles doing well. Pious consulting each other to get a decision. Eagles on the ball. Arasu, Rifki. Gerald not being able to control the rebound. Ball called back to the spot where the foul was committed. Rifki on the ball. Finds Hidayat. Arasu. Hidayat doing well to get round his men. Rifki. Ball still in play. Good work there by Rifki. Guhan. Guhan again. Good effort there. And 
We've got Alfian who's on the ground right now. The same player that got the yellow earlier. So he is down. I think he's hurt himself in the knee. He's slowly walking out with the help of uh, Guhan. Must have twisted something. The good thing about it is that we have uh, the medical help at the site uh, to take care of cases like this uh, in a quick, fast contact game like uh, indoor hockey. Uh, the chances of uh, injury is uh, fairly high, I must say, in spite of the fact that uh, a lot of safety measures have been placed have been put in place to keep the game as safe as possible. Most of the time, the injuries take place because of physical contact as both teams are fighting for the ball. And in that instance, Frederick, who ran off his line before the pass was made, so the penalty for that is that he gets to come back to the half line. Brilliant goal there by Hidayat. Good flick past the uh, goalkeeper. Asaf not being able to get to the ball quick enough. So the score stands at one all now. Eagles just scoring their equaliser. And now they are back to full force with six players. Good work there by Eagles. Penalty corner awarded. Okay, some confusion on the rules. I think the substitutions. Oh, it has something to do with his attire, I think. Not quite sure what's going on right now. I think he had to pull his socks up. SEC. Good save. Arasu on the ball. Quick counter attack. Doing well there. The uh, number three for. Uh, Nicholas for SEC, stopping uh, Arasu from advancing. Reds one on the ball. <coughs> Hidayat, the goal scorer. Rifki, quick pass to Arasu. Arasu finding Pawn. The brilliant goal there by Pawn to the right corner of the uh, SEC goalkeeper, Asaf Heng giving them the lead right now. Score two goals to one. <coughs> Leonard try to look for a quick pass to the center. Good effort there by the uh, one, two, three SEC player, Julian Benjamin. And a push from behind there. So the umpire is awarded a foul against the uh, Eagles. Frederick. Well done there by Rifki. Oh, poor pass by Rifki, though. Good stop. Still SEC. Pawn on the ball. Quick looking for Hidayat on the right. Finds Hidayat. Hidayat trying to look for a way in. Finds Rifki. Rifki missed passing but still has possession. Unfortunate for Rifki, couldn't get the ball off the sideboard and threw it out instead. SEC on the ball. Well saved by the goalkeeper, but the ball actually coming off the body of the Singapore Cricket Club player, 115, and that would be Valentine. Or is that Valentine? Good pass there to Matthias for Eagles. Tony not being able to get to the ball. And Gerald knocking off Tony's stick and that's a foul. And uh, at this point in time, we've got Guhan on the ball. 
starting of the game. Pawn on the ball now. Good work there by Pawn. And an infringement on the 115, and off he goes for bringing down the uh, uh, Ridzwan Pawn. At that point in time, as I mentioned to you, Pawn is the current uh, national coach for indoor hockey in Singapore. Brilliant player, uh, started out as an outfield uh, forward for Malaysia as uh, in uh, outdoor hockey, in uh, field hockey. He came to Singapore a couple of years ago to get involved in the coaching uh, programs with some of our schools and also with the national setup. And there is a penalty corner awarded against the Singapore Cricket Club on uh, Matthias. The SEC very unhappy with the decision, claiming there was a uh, shielding going on there by Matthias. Uh, in hockey, shielding basically means where a player on, with the ball intentionally uses his stick to block the defender from getting to the ball. Uh, obviously, that's not allowed, but then again, it depends on what is the interpretation of the situation by the umpire. Now, as the SEC in defense, can Eagles get their third goal? Pawn really strong on the ball, getting a, a bully off. Good work there by Pawn. Uh, Guhan ball hitting the back of his stick. Matthias with a little tumble there. Gets to the ball well. Matthias losing possession. Well, the ball has to travel three meters, and in that instance, the shot was taken. Ouch! The shot taken uh, before the three meters of the ball traveling. And then we have Tony trying to use the sideboards, but the ball lifted off the ground going into the stands. SEC on the ball, Gerald. Tony. Committed an infringement by uh, pushing uh, the SEC player down to the ground. Uh, Jordan f falling to the ground. And a penalty corner awarded to the Singapore Cricket Club. Good work by the uh, SEC to uh, gain their penalty corner. Frederick on the ball now. Ball passed around, Gerald. Ball rolling off, off the stick. Pawn charging in, gets the penalty corner for the Eagles Hockey Club. Nicholas committing the infringement. Good work there by the Eagles uh, Hockey Club to. Uh, Launch the counter attack so quickly. So one of the hardest things to do is to actually keep the ball flat on the ground when you're trying to move the ball out. And that comes with a lot of practice, good practice actually, uh, because it requires a lot of discipline to be able to do that. Ball coming out. A silly thing there done by Guhan to throw the uh, defensive team off. Taking an extra step. And now he gets uh, punished for, for that and he's standing behind at the half line. Well, actually, it should be a long corner because the ball actually came off the keeper. But never mind. Play, play continues. We uh, should be sort of halfway through the uh, second half already. Frederick on the ball, trying to get the ball into the uh, Eagles semicircle. 
Faris. Ooh, unfortunate for Pon. Ball taken very quickly there. Faris. Hidayat reading that situation well. Being able to get just reaching his stick out there. Umpire's call for time because the ball has trickled out the side. And back, okay. Game continues. Waiting for the whistle. There you go. Faris. Frederick. Rifki for Eagles. Umpire's call for Labuli off. Good work there by the uh, Eagles team to win the ball back. And the SEC have called for a timeout. So we're going to stop time for a while as the uh, SEC tries to work out another strategy to get back into the game uh, to score the equalizer. They're down 2-1 right now after leading for most of the game, uh, coming out of the halftime with a one-goal advantage and then uh, allowing the uh, Eagles Hockey Club to come back with two goals, and right now they are in the lead. There's not much time left, I believe. We only have maybe about five minutes before the game ends. And uh, right now the uh, SEC are changing some of the strategy. They are pushing out. Uh, the, uh, I, it looks to me like they're actually preparing for a, uh, one of the outfield players to be a active defender. Or are they? So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Because one of the uh, SEC players is changed out of his uh, white kit into yellow, which is what some teams do to gain that additional player advantage. But I think the SEC has decided that they're going to stay without, without that. Strange that that foul has been awarded against uh, Red Swan because uh, he charged to get the ball. But in any case, okay, okay. The both the teams have some confusion there. So not quite sure what's the situation. Well, both umpires have to consult now. <laughs> well, the Eagles team are claiming that the whistle wasn't blown. And because of that, the uh, foul, the goal shouldn't be, shouldn't be counted. But the umpires uh, say otherwise. Score is now 2 all. Rifki for Eagles still in possession. Pawn doing well to uh, gain possession. Losing it after that. Anyway, penalty corner awarded to uh, SEC. Well, it's a little bit of a frustrating situation for the Eagles Hockey Club because, to be honest with you, they don't have anyone to blame except themselves for allowing that second goal to go in. They were not alert enough and the SEC team took advantage of the situation to get their second goal to equalize the game and the goalkeeper trying his best just now to uh, keep the ball out. But now it's a penalty corner for SEC. They have a chance to try and win this game. Can they? No, another penalty corner awarded because the ball coming off the foot of Guhan, the uh, player running off the goal line to stop the SCC. 
Another chance for SEC to uh, get the winning goal. Faris, doing well. Good work there. SEC with a long corner now. Frederick trying to find a way in. Faris. Ball goes out the back line for Eagles. Eagles on the ball now. Arasu can't get into position quick enough. Gerald on the ball. Frederick. Frederick not quite sure what's going on. The ball is actually awarded to Eagles. Pawn losing the ball there. <coughs> Tonight, SEC has decided... And they run out of time, just as the SEC decided to pull out their goalkeeper to have an outfield uh, sort of a kicking back or a defender. They have run out of time and the game ends with a two-all score for both Eagles Hockey Club and the Singapore Cricket Club. Very entertaining game nonetheless. Uh, SEC putting some pressure and unfortunate for the uh, Eagles Hockey Club uh, for um, not... Uh, uh, by being distracted by the um, situation, the free situation in the game, uh, allowing the Singapore Cricket Club to take advantage of that situation to score the equaliser. So now the scores, the game ends with a two-all score for both these teams. A very interesting game indeed. But we're going to take a short break because the uh, next two teams will be warm warming up in a short while uh, as we uh, wait their, the start of their game. But in the meantime, I'm just going to take a short break too and I will be back to uh, run the commentary for the game that's coming up. I'll let you know who the players or which teams are playing in a short while.
Well, good evening, uh, viewers, and welcome to the uh, Singapore Hockey Federation Indoor Hockey Competition 2019 held right here in Singapore in the uh, Passeris Sports and Recreation Center. And we are witnessing the game between the Crescent Hockey Club, which is the team in yellow, against the uh, Singapore Cricket Club, who is in white. And the SEC uh, has just been awarded their first penalty corner of the game. And we have uh, Pauline Appleyard uh, waiting for the uh, Crescent girls to get ready. Abigail Rhodes on the ball. Quick shot. Pressure there by uh, Pauline, but stick checking one of the uh, Crescent defenders. Ball turned over to Crescent now. Ming Fen looking for her right wing. Rachel Chua trying to find an option. And Janice, the uh, number 18 for SEC, Janice Tan, committing a foul for a um, stick check on the, SEC, on the Crescent number 7, Hannah Tan. Penalty corner, water to Crescent. Ball to Mingfen. Mingfen in the semicircle gets a shot at goal, but it goes out the sideboard. I beg your pardon, pass the side post. No goal. Janice looking for Pauline. SEC on the, on the move. Hannah trying to find some space. That allows the ball to roll off. Uh, off a stick to uh, back line for SEC. Janice sending the ball forward but lifts it slightly. Mingfen on the free hit, a free pass for uh, Crescent. Mingfen is a uh, former uh, Crescent girl. So this team of uh, Crescent players all come from a school called the Crescent Girls School in uh, Singapore. And uh, many of them uh, have made it all the way up to the national setup. So having uh, experienced players like Ming Fen in the squad is uh, advantageous and beneficial to the uh, alumni because uh, the younger players gain their experience through the works of some of the uh, uh, old girls of uh, Crescent. And now we see Pauline putting pressure for SEC. Ball turned over to uh, Crescent. Ming Fen looking for options, can't find them. Good pressure there. Hannah on the ball now. Chance for Crescent looking for some space. Bouncing off, hoping to find uh, Rachel Chua. Uh, who uh, wasn't uh, in position to receive that ball. Anyway, it's turned over to SEC Janice Sun on the ball right now. Abigail Rhodes, ball coming off a foot. Mingfen on the ball. A miss push there by the uh, Crescent number, f number 49. Shakira, I beg your pardon, number, number 4. Patricia looking for Natsuko uh, committing a foul there. Shakira. Hannah not being able to control that ball. Lauren to Patricia. Quick ball to Philippa. Lauren.
Pauli not being able to control that ball for SCC. Ball turned over to Crescent Girls. Good work by Hannah. Under pressure there. Well done by uh, Felipa for uh, SEC. Chance for SEC to score. Unfortunately for Lauren Warner, ball goes off the side post. Crescent on the ball. Nadia. Good work by uh, Crescent to keep possession. Nadia on the ball now. Nadia Ibrahim, who is a uh, up-and-coming rising star for the Singapore hockey team. Her father was a uh, national player himself. Abigail Rhodes, quick run there. Good switch of play. Not being able to control the ball. Abigail, ball on the, in possession for SEC. Coming off the right post. Neil Lauren on the right side. Slight lift of the ball there by Lauren. Turn over to uh, Crescent Girls. Nadia, Shakira with some space. Can't control it. Patricia doing well to put pressure on her. Lauren Warner to Patricia. Lauren Warner, Patricia. A little slow in getting the ball around. Unfortunately for her, Shakira was on uh, close on her to get the free pass. Nadia receiving from Mingfen. Good work there by uh, Philippa. But she goes and uh, loses control. It steps on the ball. A foul awarded to uh, Crescent Girls. Nadia to Mingfen. Mingfen looking for an option. Ball coming off uh, the foot, but play continues. Patricia doing well. Chance. For Crescent, Hannah being closed down there, Patricia doing well to gain possession. Ball awarded to uh, Lauren. Natsuko trying to get the ball out, but the uh, number 20, Sin Yen, for Crescent doing well to stop her. Mingfen on the ball. Xin Yen tries to get to Martia. The ball coming off uh, the uh, foot of uh, Pauline from the SEC, the number 66. Mingfen looking for options. Shakira doing well to get down, not being able to get to the ball. I beg your pardon, that is Fatinal. Janice Tan for SEC finds Natsuko. Ball needs to travel three meters before pass is made. Foul not committed at that corner. I think uh, you, the foul has to be retaken. Uh, Sin Yen is, uh, mistakenly took the uh, free pass from the wrong place. We've got Ming Fen on the ball now. Sin Yen. Good work there by uh, SEC to slow down the game. Nadia. Ooh, confusion there. I think the ball hit the foot of the SEC defender, but the umpire didn't give the uh, foul. But never mind, SEC still in possession. <coughs> Janice looking for Lauren. Nadia putting pressure on her.
Lauren closely watched there by two Crescent girls. Crescent doing well. And there the uh, coach for the Crescent uh, uh, Hockey Club, uh, Coach Nodin Manaf, calling for a timeout. So we're going to stop play for a while as he uh, approaches, as the players come to him and he uh, speaks to them on some of the corrections that they can uh, improve on to uh, try and gain advantage in this game. So far the game is fairly even, both teams having their chance, the fair chance of, uh, to get into their semi-circle with the SEC, a little bit more opportunities created by their uh, forwards, uh, but uh, so far no real danger, both sides not being able to make any lethal shots at goal. But in any case, it's still early in the game, uh, there's still lots of time to uh, actually see what the uh, game's going to turn into. But so far, so good. It's a learning curve for, uh, it's a very steep learning curve for many of these players because we traditionally do not have an indoor hockey um, history here in Singapore. So many of these players, uh, some of them may have played, uh, especially in the, 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 the expatriate players that we have in Singapore, may have played indoor hockey back in their home country, but definitely for many of the locals here, Indoor hockey is a fairly new sport, so there's a lot of rules that we don't know. Like in this particular case, two stick checks on uh, the SEC number 13, resulting in a penalty stroke. So as the uh, Philippa went for SEC, was moving forward, she was closed down with a stick check. And we got Abigail Rhodes stepping up to take the penalty, well saved by the goalkeeper for Crescent. Good work there by Siti Noor Azafria, saving the ball and saving the uh, opportunity for uh, Crescent to get back into the game. Crescent doing well to uh, try to launch a counter-attack. Abigail getting past two players. Chance for SEC. Oh, Ming Fen trying to clear the ball and it goes into the foot of her teammate Nadia and a penalty corner is awarded to SEC. Unfortunate because uh, the game is so quick and so fast, sometimes trying to find an option is not that easy because you see 12 pairs of legs running around and uh, when you're under pressure, really, it's hard to make such uh, decisions to uh, try and get the ball out of danger. And uh, often you get situations like this where confusions, uh, confusion is created and then you find your team having to set, sit back. Ooh, and what a goal there by Filippo Went. The ball slipping between the feet of the um, Crescent Girls goalkeeper, Siti Noor Azafria who did well just now to, f to save the uh, penalty stroke uh, from uh, the SEC. Abigail Rhodes, uh, the player that took the penalty just now. Ball lifted off the back line and it is a long corner for Crescent Girls. I beg your pardon for the SEC. So SEC is up by one goal to nil. A well-deserved goal uh, worked out really well by the uh, SEC girls. Uh, Natsuko on the ball now. Patricia goals finds uh, Pauline. Ming Fen winning the foul there. Good ball through, but nobody there. Bit of a misunderstanding by the uh, Crescent Girls. Ball getting lost again. There's a little dark corner in the court that uh, the ball seemed to be rolling out. Uh, lost the ball a few times. Anyway, game continues. SEC on the ball, Janice Tan. Patricia. Abigail Rhodes thinking that there's a f another outfield player right the front. Misunderstanding once again. 
Well stopped there. Goal scorer, Filippo went. Shielding. And uh, for those of you who are not too familiar with uh, what that means, is that a uh, player with the ball sometimes would use their stick to block, to block the tackle of the oncoming defender by uh, putting their stick uh, and, uh, around the ball. And that in itself doesn't allow a fair chance for the uh, defender to get to the ball. So in that respect, it is uh, considered what we call shielding. So in any case, just a bit of background there and uh, some of the uh, infringements. Hannah on the ball, closely watched there. Natsuko winning the ball back for ICC, then losing it. Mingfen on the ball now. Good attempt there by Mingfen to try to get the ball into the ICC semicircle. Uh, she was trying to look for uh, one of her Crescent players. Uh, goal scorer. Doing well to win a penalty corner. The Crescent number four. Not quite sure what she did wrong. But in any case, I believe it was a stick check, but... Uh, Whatever it is, uh, the umpires awarded a penalty corner to SCC. <coughs> SCC is already leading by one goal to nil. And now they have a chance to increase their lead. Good save by the... Uh, Crescent goalkeeper, Natsuko trying a second time, but I think the ball came off a foot. Anyway, Ming Fen for the, on the ball for Crescent. <coughs> Long corner awarded to SEC. Unforced error there by the Crescent defense to try and uh, move the ball from left to right. Good defending there by Lauren for SEC. Free pass awarded to uh, Cricket Club. Good work by Abigail to find space. Not being able to get a shot, but Natsuko has a chance for a second shot. Does well to get it, but the uh, penalty corner awarded against Crescent once again. I think the ball coming off the foot of the uh, number three from Crescent Girls. Siti Haja not being able to control the ball cleanly, allowing the ball to hit the foot. Penalty corner for SCC. Natsuko on the ball. We've got Abigail Rhodes at top D. Lauren on uh, the left side. Goal scorer number 13 on the right. Abigail. Tries to get a shot in. Abigail, umpire telling Ab Abigail that the shot uh, was a dangerous situation because it must have gone above the knee of the... Ooh, Natsuko nearly getting that interception there. Martia with a chance for Crescent. Well, well left there by Patricia, uh, who was under pressure by both the uh, Crescent forwards. Martia putting pressure on Patricia. <coughs> Lauren doing well to get the ball out to Natsuko. Natsuko trying to find a way out. Martia with a chance. Ooh, just past the post. Good effort there by Martia to try and get the ball, uh, to get trying to get the first goal for Crescent. Nadia doing well, getting the ball. Oh, poor pass there. Ball coming in, second chance for SCC. Can they get a shot in? Penalty corner because the ball coming off the Crescent number four. Rising ball creating a dangerous situation 
forcing the umpire to award a penalty corner to the Singapore Cricket Club. Well, you can see in this particular uh, half so far, the game is slowly swinging towards the SEC, who is gaining more advantage, more goal-scoring opportunities being created by their players. The Crescent girls are generally uh, young. Some of them have uh, min uh, minimum experience. Abigail Rhodes, chance. Ball coming in. SEC, chance to score. Penalty corner awarded again to SEC. The Crescent girls under a bit of pressure now. Natsuko on the ball. Abigail Rhodes, chance to score. Can't get around. Good reverse flick there. And the ball forced into the left side of the goalkeeper. Second goal for SEC scored by the player number 21 for SEC, Lauren Nicola Warner. Good pressure there from uh, SEC. Score now 2 0 in favor of the cricket club. Good ball running through. Natsuko on the ball. Miss push there, Martia. Trying to look for options. Nadia. Not being able to get the ball to uh, Martia. Quick work there. Natsuko trying her best to get that shot in, but uh, she lifted the ball. Well intercepted there. And that is the halftime whistle that has just uh, been blown. The SEC are leaving the court with a two-goal advantage. It is fairly humid outside at the uh, court uh, right now uh, because we, we are also experiencing some very warm temperatures here in Singapore. And I'm sure the players are feeling it as they are walking out of the court to try and get some fresh air outside. So at the same time, I will be moving out to get a little bit of fresh air myself. I will be back for the second half in just a short while.
Welcome back to the uh, second half of the game between Singapore Cricket Club and the Crescent uh, Hockey Club and the uh, SEC team, the Singapore Cricket Club team, are uh, playing in white and they are currently leading by two goals to nil and this the indoor hockey competition that's taking place in Singapore is being held at the uh, in the Pasiris Sports and Recreation Center. So right now the SEC in possession, trying to look for a way in. Good strong pressure there, uh, pressing forward. The SEC number 13, uh, Philippa Went. Jenistan for SEC. Good work by Natsuko, leaving the ball. Bit of confusion on the on the rules of the game. Some of the Crescent girls are not very sure what she did wrong. Anyway, it's a penalty corner for SCC. Pauline Appleyard on the ball right now. Philomena with a chance. Ball coming off the foot of the Crescent player, but the uh, umpire didn't, didn't catch that one. Crescent number four still in possession, trying to get out of the situation. Strong pressure there by uh, Felipe Went. Umpire is called for a called for a bully off. Here we go. Natsuko doing well to keep possession. Lauren looks for Janice. Janice back to Lauren. Felipe, uh, Felipe went there trying to uh, get to the ball, uh, not being able to trap it. It was a good uh, attempt there by the uh, Crescent number 20 to try and get the ball to her teammates. Yin Xun, I beg your pardon, Xin Yun, Chu Xin Yun for uh, Crescent. Lauren on the ball to Janice Tan. Back to Lauren. Good work there to try to get the ball across, but uh, unfortunate there for Philippa. She wasn't able to keep the uh, control of the ball. Mingfen trying to get to the ball, loses it. Janice advancing forward. SEC a chance to go to score. Good tackle there by uh, the uh, defense from Crescent. Sin Yun doing well there in that situation. Tries to get the ball out, but not being able to. <coughs> Pauline Appleyard. Natsuko, trying to get across. Unfortunate there. Abigail Rhodes coming in now for SEC. Crescent on the run. Unfortunate for them. Uh, no shot at goal. Patricia to Abigail Rhodes, finding some space. And Abigail Rhodes a bit confused there about that rule. Martia with some space. Doing well to get around, but uh, not being able to get past Lauren. The thing about the uh, indoor hockey, uh, the jab tackle doesn't work because the jab tackle, uh, there's a risk of the ball rising or lifting off the ground. But in this case, Play continues for SEC with uh, Natsuko on the ball now. Finds Lauren on the right, I beg your pardon, on the left. Ball coming across to Philippa. Shot at goal.
it's not the empire is called uh, for advice from the other umpire we've got two visiting umpires who are specialists in umpiring indoor hockey games and basically they're here to help our local officials to they help our local officials to understand how to apply the rules in that particular instance the local umpire here actually held his decision to blow the whistle and uh, after consulting the other umpire the goal stands with SEC now leading by two goals to nil I beg your pardon three goals to nil the uh, first two goals coming in the uh, second half uh, in the first half and now uh, scoring their third goal can they get a fourth seems like they still have a lot of energy in uh, trying to get more goals player for player I think the uh, SEC players have more experienced players uh, in this uh, in this game of uh, hockey and uh, that to some extent does uh, create a bit of a disadvantage for Crescent because many of them are still very young and inexperienced Janice intercepting the ball doing well to get in gets into the semicircle penalty corner awarded to SCC as uh, Hannah tried to stop the ball and the ball lifting slightly off the ground that in itself is a penalty corner SEC awarded another penalty corner another attempt for them to try and win this game Pauline Janice with a quick shot Hannah to Nadia Nadia finds Martia Martia with not much space to move does well to get round two players Ooh, and it's a penalty corner for a harsh tackle there on Martia Janice being cautioned there for that tackle anyway it looks good uh, Nadia uh, Martia looks all right she's a she's a real tough player that's good Hannah Mingfen well saved by the goalkeeper ball coming out Pauline ooh ball still in play Mingfen being cautioned there not quite sure why <laughs> she is a little frustrated because of the decisions Martia doing well to win the ball back and the umpire is blown against Pauline for infringing Martia as she was advancing towards the SEC goal another possible opportunity for Crescent to get their first goal of the game quick push out there not very accurate Nadia with some trouble trying to get foul they're committed by Nadia and she is being sent out temporarily Crescent now with only five players on the court good work there by uh, SEC to try and move the ball around it's a bit more space now for SEC because there are only five players on the field minus the goalkeeper there's only four outfield well done by Nadia I beg your pardon by Mingfen Janice doing well to get the foot for uh, SEC ball coming out Abigail Rhodes 
Abigail's a very talented player, good, uh, good close skills. She was uh, instrumental in helping her field hockey team to perform well during the uh, National League, recently concluded here in uh, Singapore at the Sengkang Hockey Stadium. Martia there, ball coming off her foot. Free pass awarded to SCC. Janice Tan. Ball bouncing off the sideboard. Pauline losing a little bit of orientation there. Not being able to, uh, not being able to anticipate the rebound. Good pass from Hannah all the way to the, uh, her number 10, Mingfen. Doing well to steal the ball back. Chance for them and they get their first goal. Mistake there by uh, Lauren. Losing possession and allowing uh, Crescent to score their first goal. So the score stands at 3-1. SCC with 3 and Crescent Girls 1. Good pressure there by the uh, Crescent number 24. Fatinal just uh, came in a few seconds ago. Well, Crescent Girls has a good uh, hockey program going on because they uh, have some experienced and inexperienced players uh, playing and allowing the players to learn from each other. Nadia, good work there by Hannah. And it's a penalty corner awarded to SCC, an infringement committed by Janice. Can they score a second goal? Nadia, good try. A quail, well worked deflection. Good work there. Good second goal by Hannah Ismail Tan for the Crescent Hockey Club. And the uh, SEC has called for a timeout. There's still some confusion over the interpretation of the rules because, uh, as I mentioned to you, it is a fairly new sport here in Singapore, uh, indoor hockey. And traditionally, we have a history of field hockey for a number of years. And because of that, uh, some of the rules are a little, a little alien to many of our field hockey players. But nonetheless, we have two visiting umpires uh, here to help us understand and help the umpires understand how to interpret and apply the rules. And right now, Jeremiah Tong, who is the coach for the Singapore Cricket Club women, has uh, called for a timeout for his team, and they are currently working through the timeout to uh, try and sharpen their game. Good second goal there by Crescent uh, Hockey Club. Off a penalty corner, ball going off to Hannah Ismail Tan, who gently just deflected the ball of an oncoming uh, pass from her teammate from the top of the circle. The score is now 3-2 in SCC's favour. SCC losing a little bit of concentration there and allowing the uh, free pass to go to Crescent Girls. Crescent on the offensive now. Good work there by Janice to try and stop a possible third goal. <laughs> Lauren. <coughs> Trying to look for Pauline. Not being able to do so. Foul committed. Somewhere higher up. I think it was for a pass that was uh, lifted. You can't run the ball. You have to run the ball one meter if you're going to get into the semicircle. I believe that was the reason why Ming Fen was called up for a foul. Strong play there by the SEC number 13. Philippa a little frustrated because she probably thought the umpire should play an advantage. I don't think they uh, 
play that many advantage. Uh, they don't apply the advantage too much here in this game because it's so quick. Abigail Rhodes thinking that uh, Pauline was going to run down the line. Doesn't do so, not being able to get the ball to her. Ball turned over to Crescent. Mingfen, good pass across the line there. No control. Janice Tan. Ooh. Well, one of the hardest things to do in indoor hockey is to negotiate the rebound, the, re the rebound of the ball as it comes off the sideboards. Not so easy because it's a difficult ball to control. The closer you are to the sideboard, trying to receive the rebound, the harder it will be for you to anticipate where the ball is going to land. Well, SEC is still in control. Chance for SEC. Ooh, Pauline. Not quite sure what she was trying to do. Was she trying to pass? Was she trying to shoot at goal? <coughs> well, still early days for, uh, for this game because it's only the second half and not, uh, not much of it has been played so far. Obstruction there by Crescent. Pass intercepted, but unfortunate there for uh, the uh, Crescent girls. Fatinal wasn't able to control the ball. Patricia to Lauren. Lauren Warner looking for an option. Does well to find Pauline. A good ball across from Pauline to Abigail Rhodes, who was just in front of the goal. Quick pass across. First time shot by Abigail Rhodes to give them a 4-2 lead. Good work by SEC. Good series of passes to help them get past the uh, Crescent defense. 4-2. Score stands now. Crescent. did well to uh, try and get back into the game and then allowing Chris, uh, SEC to score a fourth goal. Now uh, they have to work a bit harder to try and get back uh, at least another goal or two. Patricia finds Natsuko. Natsuko looks for Felipa. Felipa under pressure. Foul, foul committed by Crescent Girls. Crescent Hockey Club in defense, SEC in the offensive. Patricia finds Pauline. Pauline does well. Mingfen, quick one two, tries to find one of her forwards, the uh, number 49, who was a little too far to receive that ball. Lauren. <coughs> Ooh, Shakira almost intercepting that. Ball coming across. Natsuko with some space. Uh, not being able to get the ball across to Pauline. <coughs> Long ball. Well, the ball has to travel three meters before you're allowed to make a pass into, the, uh, into, uh, into your teammate. Ball in closing down on Nadia. Well intercepted there. And it's a penalty corner for hacking. Nadia guilty of that charge. And right now, the SEC are going to be awarded another penalty corner. It is uh, very warm outside, as you can see. Uh, the Crescent goalkeeper has uh, removed the helmet. City Nor Azafria. I beg your pardon. City Nor Azarifa. Azafira. Azafira. That's it. <coughs> Good attempt by SEC. Natsuko trying to re deflect the ball into the near post of the goalkeeper, not being able to get it on target. 
4-2. Crescent in possession of the ball now. Ball coming across. Nadia. Good work there by Crescent to advance. Not being able to get the ball into the back of the SEC net. Janistan starting the ball out. Patricia. Oh, hard luck for Nadia uh, for Matia. Not being able to anticipate Abigail on the ball. Good shot by Abigail. Reverse hit. I beg your pardon, it was a reverse flick. <coughs> Crescent girls. Crescent, good ball there to Hannah, one of the goal scorers. Jenistan. Ooh. Good attempt to stop the ball. Abigail Rhodes. And that ball is lifted. Unfortunate. For Abigail. Laughing it off. <laughs> okay, Nadia. Hannah. Good stop there. Nadia. Martia with some, some space. Hannah. Abigail intercepting that pass. Nadia looking for options. Ball coming off Natsuko's foot. However, it was lifted slightly. So the umpires awarded a penalty corner. As Xinyan was trying to get the ball away. Ball was lifted slightly into Natsuko's foot, and then it is uh, the decision of the umpire to award a penalty corner. I believe the uh, final whistle has gone. I'm not sure, but I thought I heard a foul uh, whistle. Anyway, ooh, same penalty corner, <coughs> same penalty corner set piece that was. Uh, uh, done earlier when Natsuko missed the left post of the keeper. But in this particular set piece, very much the same. Ball coming off Natsuko's stick when that st went straight into the near post of the goalkeeper, the Crescent Girls uh, goalkeeper, Crescent, Crescent Sports uh, Club goalkeeper. Good job there by the SEC. Final score of this game, SEC 5. Crescent Girls Sports Club 2. A very entertaining game indeed, and it's, uh, it's uh, nice to see a mix of uh, different nationalities of players having fun playing a game of indoor hockey. Good work there by the uh, Singapore Hockey Federation for organizing this competition. So let's see how it goes uh, with the uh, next game that's coming up, the final game for this evening. And uh, we will bring you the commentary for that game in just a short while. So we're going to leave you with this game, SEC 5, Crescent Sports Club 2. And we'll be back in a short while for the commentary for the final game of the evening.
Uh, good evening, uh, viewers, and welcome to the Passeries Sports and Recreation Centre in Singapore, where we are witnessing the uh, game between the Eagles Hockey Club and the Singapore Police Force. So generally, the Singapore Police Force are the boys in white, and the game has just started. Uh, score still nil-nil. We've got Guhan on the ball now for Eagles. Tony trying to get the ball out. Rifki, quick running there by the uh, Eagles team. Rifki receiving the ball from Tony. Police force. Uh, made up primarily of players from the Gurkha contingent. Many of them uh, may not have that much experience in, uh, in the game in itself, uh, the game of field hockey that is, and uh, uh, coming over to participate in a competition uh, like this on uh, indoor hockey, where the rules are slightly different, can be a little bit of a challenge for them. Uh, because it takes some time to really understand the rules. And so far, it's uh, been pretty good. Both teams are fairly even, but I think the, uh, a bit more experience there by the Eagles team. Uh, hopefully, they will be able to uh, penetrate this very tough and fit Singapore Police Force team. Having the... Uh, the not having enough experience does not really account for the ability of the team, as many of them are all hockey players. The Eagles have worked their way for, uh, to their first penalty corner of the game. Score still nil-nil. Quick push into the, uh, towards the uh, goal by Tony for Eagles. Still trying to force their way and get another penalty corner. Good pressure there by Tony on the Nepalese, uh, I beg your pardon, on the uh, police players. To get a second penalty corner. Rifki on the ball now for Eagles. Ball coming out, Guhan. Good work there by Eagles. Guhan with a quick pass, return pass to Rifki, with the ball trickling into the near post of the uh, Police Sports Association goalkeeper, Mohamed Faiz bin Hamsani, one of the uh, local players who are in this uh, Police Sports Association team. Ball coming off the foot of the uh, police player. That was number 43, Ayman Amirodin. Third penalty corner coming out. Ooh, not well stopped there by Kuhn. Fortunately, uh, Faik was there. Ball coming out, going off the back line. Ayman. Under pressure there by two Eagles players. Guwen and Afik trying to fight for the ball. Not being able to get it. Bell. Tony, good work there by Tony, getting away from two of his players. Bel Bahadur Rana 
under pressure there by three players. Player number 35 there, Sabri Sharman, trying to control the ball. Bit of confusion there. Tony on the ball now. Good work there by Tony to get the ball to Guhan. <coughs> Guhan working his way through the semicircle. Stick check there by Afik. On Shafiq. Shafiq trying to spin into the uh, semicircle of the Eagles team, not being able to do so. Ball right across to Rifki. Rifki finding some space on the left. Bit of confusion there between uh, Guhan and uh, Rifki. Ball lifted off the ground. Tony for uh, Eagles. Guhan getting into a good position to receive the ball, but as he trapped it, the ball bobbed up. That would have been a, that's a foul. And uh, Arasu still on the ball for Eagles. Well worked there between uh, Arasu and Hari. Hari scoring the second goal for Eagles. Arasu had his back against the goal and uh, there was no, it was difficult for him to actually get that shot. He finds Hari free at the top of the semicircle. Selflessly gives the ball to him to allow him to take that shot for the second goal of the game for Eagles. I beg your pardon, the first goal of the game for Eagles. Tony on the ball, tries to find Hari, goal scorer, who can't uh, get, uh, get the stick behind the ball. Ball turned over to Police. Bell, trying to find his teammate. Sabri on the ball, under pressure there, Tony being able to get the ball away. Away from the defense. Well, this game is a little bit scrappy because I think uh, many of the players are kind of new to the, uh, the rules and the way to play the game. As you can see, the police association, police sports club players, a little bit awkward in certain instances. Goalkeeper trying to get the ball out, not far enough. Good work there. Guhan should have returned the pass as. Uh, his oncoming teammate, Faik, was probably in a better position to take that shot at goal. Bell, trying to look for his teammate up front. Shafiq Hamadi wasn't able to get to the ball. Still Eagles, trying to get a third goal. Trying to get the second goal. <coughs> I think the ball is... Uh, uh, got lost out of the uh, playing area and so now they are waiting for the replacement ball and they have a replacement ball on the court now the thing is we have the stands that are at the back of the goal and sometimes the ball bounces and gets caught inside the uh, stands well, in the earlier game, the earlier series of games, we had the same problem. In any case, Bell not being able to uh, control the ball there. Rifki with some flashes of skill to try and get, get the ball to uh, hurry. Bell Bahadur. Not sure if this is an official ball. Probably not because 
when you have a training ball, it's a little bit sticky and doesn't roll very well on a surface like ours. Bel Bahadur on the ball. Tries to find Sabri for police. One back by Eagles. Nice flick there by Hari. Good attempt to try and take a shot at goal over the uh, police goalkeeper. But a little bit too high. Nice hard push there along the side by the uh, police uh, defender, the number 37, Amrit Rai. Tony on the ball. Ball goes out of play. Amrit. We've got Bell Bahadur trying to get the ball forward. Intercepted there by an Eagles player. Penalty corner, the ball coming off Amrit's foot. The score is now 2 0 for. Uh, Eagles, they have another penalty corner, another chance to increase their lead. Rifki on the ball. Oops, foul there. One player has to go up because... Oh, Amrit is going up because he broke the line before the pass was made. As a, as a penalty to the defending team, you lose one runner. Ball coming out. Hurry, doing well to take that shot. Although Arasu had a lot more time than he thought, he could have held that pass a little bit longer to try to work a different variation. But that's all right. Penalty corner again. Ooh, the ball coming off the foot of the defender, Bel Bahadu. Bel Bahadu Ranu. Beg your pardon, Bel Bahadu Rana. The number 36 for Police Sports Association. The ball coming off his foot and trickling into the goal. For the third goal of the game between uh, these two sides, Eagles a uh, little more structured and organized and uh, naturally a bit more experienced as well, I believe, in terms of the ability of their skill, the understanding of the game. Oh, Guhan almost getting the fourth goal for his team. Ball squeezing under the uh, arm of the uh, oncoming goalkeeper. Well, the thing about uh, indoor hockey, because you are playing in a very tight space, it's important to be able to have a proper structure playing in the positions that you're supposed to play and being able to uh, understand the roles of those positions. So right now, the Eagles team, uh, this is their third game of the day, whereas, uh, and, and, and many of these players uh, were playing in the earlier two games, so they have developed a bit more understanding of how to move, where to go, and what to do. Whereas the uh, Police Sports Association, this is their first game this evening, and I believe uh, that uh, is the disadvantage that they have right now as uh, Eagles have been uh, experienced already. But then again, with, that, uh, with uh, the not that much experience as compared to Eagles, they were able to, make, to score their, thir their, their first goal of the game. So uh, we have player number 43, Ayman Amirudin bin Sodin, scoring the first goal for Police Sports Association, bringing the score to 3-1. In, the favor, in favor of uh, Eagles. Good work there by police. Ball being traveled across there. 
Rifki, ooh, trying to look for Guhan, not being able to do so. Amrit, oh, a missed pass there by Amrit, trying to find Bel Bahadur Rana. In the process, um, awarding a long corner to uh, Eagles. Ball coming out for Eagles. Rifki doing well to try and stop the ball, but uh, the rule is you can't play the ball while you are on the ground. And I believe that's why the uh, foul is awarded to police. But then the ball is a little too far for Ayman. Beg your pardon, it was Shafiq was trying to run to the ball. Rifki on the ball now. Chance for Eagles. Good save there by the goalkeeper. Faiz for police. Amrit Rai, the number 37 from the police association, on the ball right now. Good hard push. Rifki doing well to get to the ball first. Gets the ball across. Well saved by the keeper. And a little push at the back there. Guhan on the ball now. Guhan getting the ball across. Ooh, sending the ball towards goal. Hari with a nice flick. But the ball hits Amrit Rai in the body. And that is a uh, penalty corner for... Eagles. So some of the rules are fairly new, uh, and many of the players are, uh, need time to understand how the rules are applied, how the rules of the game are being uh, applied. So the umpires have been kind enough to help the players understand some of the rules, giving them a bit of instructions, giving them a bit of uh, uh, information about the rules. Anyway, Eagles with the ball now, trying to find a way in. Ooh, and does well to score the next goal, Guhan, with their fourth goal. So the score stands at Eagles 4 and Police Sports Association 1. A bit more space now uh, for Eagles because the, uh, they're able to maneuver around the court more comfortably. They're a little more organized uh, than the... Uh, Police Sports Association. Amrit Rai winning a free pass for his team. Rifki on the ball now. Finds Guhan. Guhan trying to look for an option. He does well to work the ball through, but well defended there by, by uh, Police Sports Association. Bel Bahadur Rana running the ball off the right side of the field. And they've earned a long corner. Good work there. Nice hard push coming off uh, Hari's foot. No, the ball was lifted slightly, but uh, I think the umpire still awarded the free pass to uh, the Police Sports Association. Sabri. Does well to find a space, but not hard enough to get the ball across. Kuhan, in some space. Good turn by Kuhan. Nobody there to receive. Counter-attack by uh, police. Ayman there, closed down by two Eagles players. Arasu doing well to get the ball back. 
Ball coming off. Ayman stick. And it's a free pass for Eagles. Arasu on the ball. Arasu doing well. Transferring the ball left and right. Kuhan doing well to get the ball. And that was the halftime whistle. And we have the score right now. It stands at 4 1 in the Eagles Hockey Club's favor. Good job so far. But this, uh, this game is uh, slowly progressing. But I think uh, the Eagles have the upper hand as the score uh, reflects. But I'm going to take a short break as the, as the boys uh, go out for a quick water break. And we will be back for the commentary of the second half between Eagles Hockey Club and Police Sports Association. Score scans at Police Sports Association 1, Eagles Hockey Club 4. Welcome back to the uh, second half of the game between Eagles Hockey Club and Police Sports Association. The score is now 4-1 in favor of the Eagles Hockey Club, the guys in black. 
as uh, they, they uh, now have just started the second half right here at the Passeries Sports and Recreation Center in Singapore. The uh, indoor hockey competition is, is a short competition that's taking place today, tomorrow and next weekend. But the uh, series of games that we are covering today, uh, this is the last game that we have for tonight and uh, it's between the Eagles Hockey Club who's actually played three games so far, tonight, just today alone. Uh, each half is only 20 minutes, and we are in the uh, second 20 minutes of the game between uh, Eagles and uh, Police Sports Association. Right now, Eagles, who are in black, uh, have the free hit, and uh, in that particular instance, as the rule implies, you can't make a forward pass unless the ball travels three meters. And in that instance, Player number four, Mohamed Faik, has committed a foul. And the pass has been awarded to Police Sports Association. Bel Bahadur Rana, looking for his teammate. Tony Ahesh leaving the ball for Police Sports Association. Long pass, Rifki on the ball for Eagles. Arasu. Good work there by the uh, goalkeeper, the Eagles goalkeeper. Quick passing there. Ooh, good work by the Eagles team to get the ball moving from right to left and back. Trying to find space and trying to get the ball into the back of the uh, police goal. Ashesh on the ball to... Uh, Rana, Rana finding Sabri, Sabri not being able to control the ball. Tony now with the ball, with some space to move forward. Not quite sure why he let the ball go though. Anyway, Tony on the ball now. Rivki. Trying to look for some space to get past. Does well to get the ball across, however, well intercepted there by... Rana, Rana, have a chance to get the ball across into the goal. Good work there by uh, Eagles. Rahesh, chance, good save by the keeper. Still Eagles, Arasu, quick space, good shot to Tony. And the ball coming off the foot of Ashish Iwahang, who is uh, one of the police uh, players. Penalty corner awarded to Eagles Hockey Club. Well, they have a 4-1 advantage right now. Uh, will they be able to increase their lead? Well, that's left to be seen. The Eagles team has seem to have uh, control over this game. Quick pass. Good flick into the corner. The uh, goalkeeper on the, on the uh, far end was able to uh, confirm that the ball did go th into the goal because the uh, ball was so quick. It went off the right side of the goalkeeper and now the score stands at the Eagles Hockey Club, 5. Police Sports Association, 1. Good goal there by Hari. Free pass, I beg your pardon. I think it's a uh, bully off. Ball being moved very well across the court. And it's a penalty corner again because the ball came off the foot of Bell Bahadu Rana. And Eagle says they have another penalty corner. Well, they've had quite a few penalty corners so far in this game. One of the important things to have is the uh, first touch on the ball. Well saved by the keeper. Still not out of danger. 
Police Sports Association. Good attempt there by, uh, e by uh, Police Sports Association to get into the uh, Eagles goal. Shafiq trying his best to get round the three Eagles defenders who managed to stop him. Good work there by Rifki to create another penalty corner against the Police Sports Association. Bel Bahadur Rana, ball coming off his foot once again. The thing about indoor hockey is that you've got to keep the stick flat on the ground, protect your feet so that the ball doesn't. Uh, you don't expose your feet in the game. Chance, no goal. Good work by uh, Eagles to uh, create more and more opportunities. Bel Bahadur, Rana on the ball now. Trying to get the ball forward. Not being able to find Shafiq. Tony. Ooh. Good work there by Hari, not being able to uh, get to the ball. Guhan with his runs along the side, doing well to get the ball up, but not being able to get the ball across. Anyway, the ball comes off one of the, uh, well, it comes off, uh, off the defender and uh, it's now a long corner. Arasu on the ball, finds, uh, finds Hari, Hari finds Tony, Tony not being able to get past the uh, police goalkeeper. <coughs> Hari to Tony, Tony quick pass across to Kuhan. Arasu on the ball, Tony, good work to uh, find Hari, Hari not being able to get past Bell, Bell good pass to the left, I beg your pardon to the right, and Shafiq there trying to swing at the ball and uh, created a foul, Tony on the ball, Arasu, Arasu to Tony, Kuhan, good work, Tony on the ball. Tony, Afik not being able to get the stick around fast enough to stop that one. Ooh, Amrit there under, under pressure. Poor pass from Bell, but anyway, it's still uh, police have been awarded their pass. Good work there by the 43, Ayman, for winning the ball. Bell, nice strong pass, looking for Sabri. Sabri forcing his way through. Long corner, Amrit tries to find Sabri, but the ball a little too hard, not being able to uh, anticipate the bounce or the, de or the de deflection from the uh, sideboard. Good work there by Rifki, but uh, chance for police. And it's a brilliant shot there taken by the number 43 for the Police Sports Association, Ayman Amiruddin bin Sodin, to give police their second goal of the game. Score now stands at 5-2. Eagles, 5, Police, 2. Police trying to get back into the game, creating opportunities for themselves.
and Eagles earning a penalty corner in that particular attack. Good work there by their number 25, Mohamed Afik, for working the ball down the sideline to get the ball in front. The Eagles have scored, I think, if, if I'm not wrong, from the five goals, they've scored three of penalty corners. So that should be their uh, strategy to try and get as many penalty corners as they can. And there you can see one of the police players who broke the line and has been asked to go to the half line. Well saved by the keeper, second shot. Eagles not being able to convert that penalty corner, but that's okay. They are still in possession of the ball. Guhan being pushed from the back. Tony on the ball. Trying to find Rivki. The ball coming off the sideboard. Good work there by uh, Hari to find Rivki. Ooh. Ball lifted slightly there by Tony and a foul awarded to Police Sports Association. Bell. Tony. Trying to look for options. Finds Rifki. Tony leaves it. Ball. Bell at appealing to the umpire that the ball had actually touched the foot of the uh, Eagles, the oncoming Eagles player, uh, Afik. Good attempt there, but the uh, Eagles winning the ball back. Arasu finding some space. Quick shot there by Hari into the goal, scoring the sixth goal for Eagles Hockey Club, bringing the score to Eagles 6 Police Sports Association 2. Good attempt there by Eagles to try and get back into the game. Amrit Rai, ball a little bit too far for him. The, the Police Sports Association losing a little bit of uh, concentration there in the game. Failed attack there by Eagles. Ooh, ball coming off Hari's foot. Quick ball across. Bell trying to find Sabri, but not being able to find him cleanly enough. Eagles on the attack once again. Hari on the ball, looks for Arasu. Arasu claiming that he was inside the semicircle when he took that shot. The other umpire who is from the side is not able to see whether or not the ball had actually gone in. But from where I'm standing, the ball actually went down the left side of the keeper and into the goal. So that should be a goal, but I think maybe the other umpire, the umpire on this side, a little bit distracted by, the, by something and he didn't pick it up. But that's okay. But then again, the score still stands at 6-2, although Arasu feels otherwise. Well, it's a lot of hard work trying to get a goal, and when you do, you want to try and make sure that it's awarded to you. Anyway, the Police Sports Association has called for a timeout. Each team is allowed one timeout per half, and in this instance, the Police Sports Association goalkeeper, who's the captain of the team, call for a timeout to explain to his players what they should do to help them along. Well, anyway, now it's like 6-2. Probably have about another seven minutes of the game left. So we'll see what happens. Oh, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier that uh, in one of the other games, that the uh, indoor hockey is, uh, is something new to Singapore. We don't have a history of indoor hockey here. Uh, Historically, this, the nation plays field hockey. So many of the players who are playing indoor hockey are actually field hockey players. Well, some of them are converts from floorball, another sport that has grown over the years here in Singapore. 
So uh, our umpires, who are actually field hockey umpires, are also fairly new to the game. So a lot of uh, the rules that are being applied in the game require some understanding and uh, you can only understand the application when the game is being played. And we have two visiting umpires here who are helping us with the understanding of the rules. So that, uh, that is very helpful to be able to uh, pick up the sport and try to improve and increase the participation of indoor hockey here in uh, Singapore. Arasu there doing well to cut off the pass. Police should have done better with that one. Hari doing well to earn a penalty corner for Eagles Hockey Club. A tricky little player he is. So once again, the uh, Police Sports Association defending another penalty corner against the uh, Eagles Hockey Club, uh, who's currently leading by six goals to two. The boys are lining up on the uh, top of the D, top of the semicircle. Can they get a seventh goal? Ball coming out. And there uh, on the rebound, Mohamed Faik doing well to uh, knock the ball past the goal line to give them the seventh goal. So the score now is. Eagles Hockey Club 7, Police Sports Association 2. So what's happened now is the uh, Eagles Hockey Club have retired their goalkeeper and put in an additional and put in an outfield player. So now Eagles Hockey Club are playing without a goalkeeper and with only and all six players being able to uh, advance and attack and defend as a team. It's a good strategy to have, especially now that they are seven goals up and with uh, limited time left in this game. It's uh, highly unlikely that the Eagles, the Police Sports Association, will be able to get back into this game, as I just mentioned. And right now you can see that Rifki has scored the eighth goal for Eagles Sports Association. Well, in a sense, uh, it is also an opportunity for Police Sports Association to try and... Uh, oh dear, that was a terrible, terrible mistake by the uh, Police Sports Association. Too easy, allowing Guhun to score the ninth goal of the game for Eagles Hockey Club. Sabri on the ball. Police boys are not very sure about the rules. It seems like uh, they're getting a little bit frustrated. Well, that's what it's like when you don't really know the rules. Of course, you don't really know sometimes what you're doing wrong. So Eagles are all over the place now. Confidently moving the ball around. And there, in that instance, Arasu lifting the ball off the ground as he was trying to look for Rifki. Amrit Rai on the ball now for police. Quick passing there by uh, Eagles. You're not quite sure why. Uh, some of the, 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 the fouls being committed. Sabri just missing the ball. Eagle still in possession. Amrit Rai under pressure there. Ball coming off the uh, stick of the Eagles uh, player. Foul awarded to police. Ooh, risky pass there. Amrit under pressure. Losing the ball and allowing police, I beg your pardon, allowing. Eagles to score their 10th goal. Into, they're into the double digits now. Score at 10-2. Well, I think uh, to be fair to the uh, Police Sports Association, they haven't actually 
had much experience in this indoor game. Perhaps this is their first game taking part in this uh, tournament. And uh, obviously it shows that uh, it's going to be difficult for them. And right now they've... Uh, credit to them for trying to get the game going, learning along the way as, at the same time. And there they have committed another penalty corner because the ball coming off the foot of one of the uh, police players. The close skills that are involved in uh, indoor hockey is very, very uh, crucial for the uh, success of the team. Do they have a chance to get another goal? And it's another penalty corner because the player Number 36, Bel Bahadur Rana, who was clearing the ball, pushed it so hard that it lifted slightly. And that is a foul, an infringement against the Police Sports Association. So it's not over for them yet. Eagle still has a chance to get a 11th goal. Police have to try and get the ball out of that semicircle. Well saved by the keeper. And that's the end of the game between the um, Eagles Hockey Club and the Police Sports Association. The final score is uh, Eagles, uh, 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 Eagles Hockey Club 10, Police Sports Association 2. And with that, uh, viewers, we leave you uh, with the final game of the day here at the uh, Passeries Sports and Recreation Center in Singapore, where we are hosting the uh, local indoor hockey league. Uh, there are more games coming up tomorrow, so do uh, watch, for, watch out for the games um, on our Facebook. All right, uh, if you just uh, type in One Play Sport, you will find all the commentary as well as the, uh, the action of the indoor hockey competition here at the uh, Passeris Sports and Recreation Center. So with that, I bid you good night. Uh, my name is Gerard Denker and hope to uh, have you viewing our games uh, as we uh, also bring you some more games tomorrow evening.